Let's talk about the way that we eat. With our face in a bowl on the floor? Nah, I'm just kidding. I put it on the table. I'm not an animal. There are many factors that contribute to our food choices, eating behaviors, and the way that we feel about ourselves and our bodies. That was some of the most generic talking points I've heard in a long time. Anyway, let me pause for a second to talk about this style of video. It's got the little hand that looks like it's drawing each element. The first few times I saw these, I was awed. All this original artwork, it must have taken them a ton of time. Then I learned there's a simple program called Doodly for a flat $67. You also can make generic YouTube videos that look like everyone else's. It's probably a great deal for business presentations where originality doesn't matter at all. My point is that these videos are no harder to make than a PowerPoint presentation, maybe even easier. These videos are just so much worse than the ones where the creator keeps using the same static images over and over. Can you imagine? Sometimes it's because the food looks delicious. Other times we choose food due to convenience or cost, or maybe we're feeling sad or bored and we look to food for a pick-me-up. Sure, we sometimes eat because we're bored. No, it's not a good thing. The picture they chose at this point was of a guy who looks like his wife just left him. Sometimes we choose food for its nutritional value. Other times we use food to help us celebrate a special occasion. We have to eat to survive, but that's not the only reason that we eat, and that's okay. Okay in terms of it not being morally wrong, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you. Food is meant to be enjoyable. How else do you think our Neanderthal ancestors survived? I looked it up. Apparently they hunted big game with spears. Probably not so much sitting around drinking wine while munching on cheesy poofs and scrolling through Reddit. Wait a second, did she say our Neanderthal ancestors? How else do you think our Neanderthal ancestors survived? Sure, 4% of our DNA is Neanderthal. I guess that means our ancient ancestors weren't completely racist. Yet I can only imagine how awkward it was to be invited home for Christmas and to bring home your Neanderthal significant other. Almost as awkward as my family's get-togethers. They found food, it tasted good, they kept eating it, and eventually they prospered. Neanderthals are basically gone. She knows that, right? And here we are thousands of years later. Is she claiming to be 100% Neanderthal? A bold claim. However, this is where the situation goes awry. We now live in a society that focuses on diet culture. I thought we mostly focused on what the next MCU movie is going to be. Which is defined as a set of beliefs that value thinness, appearances, and shape above health and well-being. I gotta love the straw man definitions. Does she know it's entirely possible to diet without not considering health and well-being? Diet culture has created a disconnect between our minds and our bodies. Uh, aren't fat activists the ones who talk about their body like they are a passenger on some kind of vehicle they can't control? Instead of taking care of our bodies in a way that would cause them to flourish and thrive, we have changed our tactics to shape them and to manipulate them to live up to a harmful and unrealistic societal ideal. I fear she thinks that having a healthy BMI is considered an unrealistic ideal? Research shows over and over again that going on a diet to achieve this thin ideal is associated with increased emotional distress, body dissatisfaction, depression, and future overweight status. Wait a second. If you take a group that's overweight, there's good odds they'll be overweight in the future, too? Shocking. Yes. You heard that right. Going on a diet is a predictive factor for weight gain in the long term, not weight loss. She really thinks she has something there. Who's going to tell her that's not a shiny stone, that's a shiny poop? Even more concerning is that 35% of those that begin dieting eventually go on to develop disordered eating behaviors. Citation needed. The good news is, there is a way to fix this ridiculous cycle. It is possible to relearn how to respect your body, to get back in touch with your natural hunger and fullness cues, and to eat in a way that fuels your body, mind, and spirit 
without having to constantly be anxious about its appearance. You mean eat 10 servings of fruit and veg a day and get a total of 7 hours of exercise a week, even if it's very light exercise, like walking? She doesn't mean that, does she? It's all about changing your perspective. Using a combination of behavior modification techniques, listening to your body, intuitive eating principles, and gentle nutrition. Oh, I vomited in my mouth a bit when she said gentle nutrition. Ugh. And why am I not surprised she didn't just say eat more vegetables and move more? You too can experience the liberation of food freedom. Humorously, she chose a pick of a couple, going to an expensive restaurant as meaning food freedom. The pick is more of a stand-in for solve all of your problems by being rich. I guess doodly can give you the tools, but I can't make a monkey into Michelangelo. Don't be afraid to reach out today. Reach out today? Oh, leash. She's selling something. For her sake, I hope it makes at least 67 bucks, so she can make back the money she spent on the software. Based on her three subscribers, I don't think her YouTube career is gonna do it. Thank you to everyone who helps support me to make these videos, and to everybody who comes and watches. A special thanks goes out to Hannah McNally, Carl Williams, and Sarah Ahern for their generous support. That's the end of the video. If you liked it, consider clicking like and subscribe. If you really liked it, consider becoming a member. As always, there should be more Fat Logic videos every other Monday, and on the weekends I'll be looking at videos made by Fat Logicians.